What's up, everybody? This is Steve, and Josh is here with me. We are coming from you not quite live, um, running into some te technical difficulties tonight. So uh, we're going to wing it, uh, do some old school stuff, and uh, yeah, you're going to get to listen to us later. Um, so, Josh, how are you? Good. Uh, it was nice to actually be at a game again. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we talked about the Summer of Hounds and how it was like constant games every week. And it was kind of like, boy, it felt like, uh, you know, a lot of games in a row. But then I was gone for a couple of weeks and we didn't have games every week uh, mm -hmm. at home. And now it felt like it haven't been at a game at Highmark until like for a month. <laughs> so, yeah, it was nice. I mean, yeah, no, it was great to see you uh, in the very uh, rainy, damp tailgate environment um because you're right like i feel like i haven't seen you there in so long i mean you know you missed the previous game um but then even before that what was it, it was like a month uh yeah. of away games and off weeks um so what end of july end of august That's, no end sounds of, right i, I was of august was end of july month. something like that yeah like yes. it's, it's been a while um so yeah the hounds were back um we got to watch some soccer it was wet. Um, still a pretty good crowd, I thought, though. No, yeah, that's been the story of the year, really, I feel like, uh, other than the fact that our team is awesome and doing great things, is the fact that the stadium itself has been really, uh, Pittsburgh has been supporting the team and mm -hmm. coming out in game after game, games even I think, like, we normally wouldn't draw a crowd mm -hmm. uh rainy games you know having multiple games back to back to back thinking that you know the support would wane people would mm -hmm. kind of be like oh, i'm not going to go do another game since i was just at a game last week all that kind of stuff uh surprisingly it keeps on happening we keep on selling huge amount of tickets for that yeah. stadium and i mean at this point i think it's like a guarantee we have to expand and the only thing that would stop us at this point for expansion would probably be uh, the city itself with all its red tape when it comes to expanding our stadium. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I hope that that's what happens. I'd love to see what the solution is to that. Um, I just think, yeah, I mean, I don't know what that would look like. I mean, I know the team has talked about some different options, but I know there are challenges structurally and, and engineering wise for some of those. So I know uh, fans, people in the steel army, other people have uh, thrown out some ideas that I think are a little bit, uh, a little bit crazier, like trying to go across the road and whatnot, which um, I think that would be super cool. I just don't know the plausibility of that. And I am not a structural engineer, so I'm not going to pretend to know. Uh if anyone can do it, it's Tuffy with his <laughs> construction company. Yeah. And also some of those crazy ideas weren't coming from the steel army. They were coming from the front office, hey, <laughs> including I mean, Tuffy. So bring him on. I'd love to see it. Right. Yeah I, yeah. I think at this point, the only thing I would stop them is nothing constructional, like construction wise, uh, you know, any of that it's, it's, it's all red tape wise, mm -hmm. um, getting them to approve an expansion of that yeah. stadium is going to be the thing that it's going to take the most time. Yeah. So, Josh, we've got some soccer to talk about. I'm going to try something. And I know Zoom likes to do something where it, it yeah. hampers audio. So I'm doing a victory beverage. If you don't hear it, just pretend. Did you hear it? I heard nothing. I knew it. So this <laughs> is what happened. Zoom. Uh. I was on uh, Halsey. <laughs> And I just oh, jumped yeah, on I just remember. to do a victory beverage and I did it and nothing happened. And I was yep. like, what, why can't you hear it? It's because zoom, if it hears a lot of noise, it cuts it off. Yeah. So can I, uh, maybe put you on the spot then and ask you to do your best victory beverage cracking impersonation. I mean, if I do too good of a job, it's going to clip it. So, so did you he hear hey, that? That works. That works. Woo! All right. I did it slow. The whole really, it wouldn't like <laughs> register as like a loud noise out of nowhere. But yeah, because yeah, the Hounds won two to one uh, two to against one. New Mexico. Um, Josh, I mean, tell me your thoughts overall on the game. Every corner is a goal. Uh, and <laughs> it's was great to see. Uh, so a little bit, you know, if you're in our section, you know this, but a lot of people might not, not know it. We used to do every corner is a goal, a chant. And then we were like, you know, let's get away from that because it's kind of like, it always feels a downer when we don't score off of the corner mm -hmm. and it, it's a silly chant. So we moved to doing the Terminator two dun 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 dun, mm -hmm. dun. like it's just a drum beat. Yeah. And everyone usually stamps their feet or claps their hands or you know pounds the flagpole to that beat. 
it's pretty cool. I like it. Mm -hmm. But you still get a couple people wanting to do every corner is a goal. And usually it's like not even half. It's just some. Well, uh, this after the first goal (laughs) and then the second goal, uh, the whole section, which is like, no, we're doing every corner is a goal now. This is the only chant we're doing (laughs) the rest of this game, every corner. So, yeah, that, that was a lot of fun. Um, but overall game, fantastic. It was, it was fun. Uh, the fact that we were able to pull out the win, we looked good. I know at the first half, we'll talk a little bit more about this, you know, well, a lot more about this, but I didn't really think we looked like the better team at first necessarily, or not even so much the better team. It just felt like a little more evenly matched, a little bit more like anything could happen, Mm -hmm. but then, you know, can't really do much once you get two goals in a row from, from corners, the team, uh, New Mexico is kind of letting those in and yeah. you can kind of tell they got deflated after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, and, but I think it was also something that it seemed like something was going to come from those dead ball opportunities. Uh, I mean, early, early in the game, I want to say it was like four or five minutes in uh, that free kick where Griffin whipped it in and Joe Farrell put it just wide um, was another opportunity. And then even after that, I mean, there was another uh, almost, goal from a corner that uh joe put off the crossbar um so i mean i think he had an excellent excellent night in the box um uh three goals or three balls uh on frame um or right around the frame and one of those being being the goal um so i mean great i think performance by the center backs to get into those positions get dangerous loved arturo's uh the the second one um making that run to the near post uh, just being able to flick it in. I mean, both were beautiful, but seeing that type of movement, which um, I mean, I think it's something we've talked about over the years, wanting to see more goals from corner kicks, more goals from our center backs. And it feels like this is the year that that's really, really happening and happening well. Um, and I don't know. I mean, do you think that that is something different about this group of center backs? Do you think it's a uh, tactical change or do you think it's just that Kenny's been uh, putting them in the perfect spots this season? I I think it is a different in personnel as far as uh, quality of players. And I think it's also just gelling more like it. it mm-hmm. it's, it's a little bit of a it's not really intangible, but like you can tell this team is connected more just as mm-hmm. a the cohesive units Mm -hmm. and it feels like uh they're all out there together um so i i think it's it it is a little bit of the fact that i i do think the quality of players that we are getting nowadays are are higher than we have in the past but Mm -hmm. i think it's just also that this team is really doing good uh understanding each other and being in the right spots knowing where to expect the ball because it does take two in that situation Mm -hmm. um but also uh toro's a goal Goal celebration. Was it a bunt of a bat or was it a golf swing? I have no idea now, but now I'm like, huh, he did do something. When I was watching the highlights, like I was more focused on like, okay, now I got to re-see that run that I didn't even pay attention to the goal celebration. When he swung up or when he went to, you know, uh, you know, build up the swing, I thought he was about ready to like swing a bat, but then it, it looked like a either a bunt or maybe it was a golf swing. I'm not, I'm not sure. Someone let me know. Uh, if you have an opinion on yeah. this. Yeah. You know, that would have been a great, uh, a great thing to ask him if I was uh, sticking around for post game, <laughs> but I wasn't. Um, uh, I had uh, a friend um, come brought his six-year-old son. It was their first Towns game. Um, and I mean, obviously uh, what a night to to be <laughs> sitting in the stadium for the first time, but they had a blast. I mean, okay, got good. to see the win. Um, they want to come back. They were, he was asking me, he's like, so can't make it next week, but do you know how much the tickets are going to be for the playoffs? I was like, (laughs) they'll be a little more expensive, but they're still not that expensive. He's like, I think I want to come. Um, Yeah. Playoff games are are special. Like, Oh yeah. It's going to be a little, a lot different of an atmosphere, even Mm because even though we did do a pretty good selling out the stadium and filling up the stadium, nowhere near what you will see Mm -hmm. at a playoff game, even if the weather is crap. Right. Because we definitely have had crap weather at playoff games before and have filled that place up. So. Yeah. Okay, so impromptu uh over under uh for the first round of the playoffs. Uh over the 6100 from the Open Cup match or under the 6100 for the from the Open Cup match. Um I'm going to say under but just because I feel like that 6100 is 
extreme. <laughs> like, I, I like, I'm not saying that we can't get over it, but uh, I, one, I don't know if we actually could, if I'm being honest, <laughs> that that stadium was packed. Uh, it would be a lot more standing room only uh, people just milling about uh, not in the stadium yeah. uh, in the bleachers because yeah, at least our section, you could not move. There was nowhere to put those people if they, if yeah. they had more ticket sales. Yeah. No, I, I think I tend to agree, but I think that the front office and the ticket office, they're going to try. Um, I mean, I, oh, I, was amazed, try. I was amazed that game that uh, one of the people in the organization told me that they thought, oh, no, we might be able to get another four or 500 people in here. And I was like, where are you going to put them? But hey, yeah. if they want to try to do it, who am I to argue, right? I, I, I could, guess... could they just rent bleachers and put them like where the uh, picnic tables are uh in between the two sections i mean i think that would be a way to get some throw some there that'll yeah, get you I mean, a good amount more people there what um a couple hundred people right there yeah, yeah. right there alone probably Boom. double the capacity triple the capacity of who stands there yeah um next thing um, we know there's going to be bleachers in front of the pub you're gonna have to only no use bounce the side house because they're yeah. gonna have it right there right. as well <laughs> right um, do what you gotta do man do what right. you gotta do yeah yeah um, um no, I think I tend to agree. I think it's, I think that's a hard bar to hit. Um, I think a deep run in the playoffs, and uh, then then we start to see more. I mean, but I think we're we're burying the lead there in that that we're talking about this. But with this win, we're playing at home in the first round of the playoffs. And no doubt, we would at least get the first game at home. Yep. I'm I'm my sights are set firmly on first place, so we get all games at home. And not first place in the league, first place in the league. Like mm-hmm. I want, I want to know that every single game is going to be at home. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the great thing about this is not only did uh, we win, but some of the other results went our way, and oh, yeah. that puts us in pole position uh, to be top of the league and get that. Uh, you guys talked about what's it? What's it? Not the supporter shield in our league. What's it? Uh, Player Shield. Um, player Shield? Yeah, Player Shield. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I always forget the name of it because I, well, we've never won it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, we were, I mean, coming into the, not the game, but the game week, uh, we were tied with Sacramento um, uh, on points, but they had a game in hand. Um, and we were uh, just a little bit ahead of Tampa Bay, but they would have come down to the result of our upcoming match against Tampa Bay. Um, they've both dropped points um, and dropped enough points that um, if we take the Tampa Bay game out of the equation, it doesn't really matter what those two teams, if we win the other three games that we've got. Yeah. I mean, we still have Charleston uh, at our heels a little bit. Um, they're at 56 points right now. We're mm-hmm. at 60. Uh, so like, that's a possibility uh but i feel like yeah the, the big swing was going to be tampa especially since tampa has been on a hot streak and they have a game in hand mm-hmm. so that was the other worry there because they actually have more opportunities to get points but yeah them losing was a huge deal yeah. and and also uh, you know in the west having sacramento lose was also huge because now they're at 55 points like i said we're at 60 so mm-hmm. it's going to take you know uphill battle for them uh right so having the you know our own destiny in our hands is wonderful so yeah i mean we're i mean we're at a position where our maximum points are 69 charleston's maximum points are uh was it 65 yeah 65 um uh tampa bay can add 12 to their current 52 or 54 so that puts them at uh 56 um and then Sacramento, San Antonio out West, they're separated by a point um, with three games to play each. So um, uh, 64 and 63 points respectively. Um, And so not that I like to take the approach of, oh, we can mess up. Um, But having that little bit of breathing room, I think that that is massive for the team because it takes a little bit of that pressure off. And hopefully we can go into these next few games and have a lot of fun. Um, Watch the guys go out and enjoy themselves and put on some good experiences for the fans. Um, 
And I mean, obviously one of those games is, is this weekend at home. Um, and then the final game of the season is at Detroit where uh, it should be pretty, pretty big crowd from the Riverhounds uh, supporters and from the Steel Army in particular heading up there. And so I, mean, I think that that adds a lot to it as well. It's not like they're finishing on the road and finishing on the road in places where people aren't going to be. Yeah. We're getting ahead of ourselves. We should probably talk about this game a little bit more. Okay. Okay. Uh, you're right. Because there are a couple right. things I do want to make sure that we 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 talk about. Uh first one being the disallowed goal. Well, not I say disallowed, but what I really mean is the no goal call. Uh when it came to Chico's, you know, it looked like a goal yeah. from our section. It it really did, but do you I saw you had some screenshots. I haven't really looked okay. at them yet. I want to know I like, was, you did some analysis here. I was confident when I pulled it up on my phone and watched the replay back on ESPN Plus. I uh-huh. was confident that he got robbed. Um, he was confident that he got robbed uh in my conversation with him after the game. Um I can't with full confidence say that I'm a hundred percent sure. I think he did, but as I went through um looked at the the highlights on YouTube and tried to evaluate it. The problem is, I mean, it's so hard in uh, the exact moment that it comes off the player's foot to really differentiate where the ball is from the angle because the camera angle is a little bit behind the goal. And it's just really hard to tell. Um, And I'm just like, I'm looking at it and I'm just like, oh, that's so stinking tight. it is. Yeah, I actually you know, watched the replay before this and this is before I even saw your screenshots. And I was going to say, after watching the replay, I am I think it's way too close that it's I can't say he was robbed anymore, but it ugh, I don't but, know. But I think there's a bigger issue in that in who's making that call. Because the linesman was two steps from the end line. In the moment. Mm-hmm. Right. Like he did not like the linesman did not have a good ability to make that call one way or the other. And to me, that's a bigger problem. So I'm just like, I, it's not that I feel like uh, maybe they messed up the decision. I feel like you couldn't even get the call right if you were like because you weren't in the right spot. And that I find even more frustrating in, in, in this case, because it's like, like, how do you make a good call when you're not where you're supposed to be as a linesman and you're two strides uh upfield trying to make that call I, I don't know and and i'm just like do i feel a little robbed in that sense that maybe it was a goal maybe it wasn't it's really hard to tell but i'd at least feel a little better or or maybe i'd feel more justified in like you made a bad call as opposed to <laughs> you couldn't even make a good call so if given the option we can only have one either var or goal line technology which one would you want first goal line tech i i I think getting the goals right is really important i think that uh there's a lot of benefit to var but var implementation like getting var doesn't mean you get good var implementation but Mm -hmm. getting the sensors on the goals and the ball and having that automated system it's pretty foolproof and so i think that makes a big difference for me. Um, I think you look at like the differences in the way some leagues or competitions use VAR where uh, there's somebody that's not associated with calling the game that makes the actual decision versus somebody watching it and telling the center official to then go check their own work. Um, and I'm yeah. much more of a fan of somebody saying, hey, you got it wrong and that's okay. You're going to get it wrong, but this is what the call should be as opposed to you should go look and see if you made a mistake. No, that's fair. I, I do think goal line technology is one of those things where it's, it's black or white mm-hmm. uh, and it's 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 instantaneous because it's just like a little sensor on the ref's hand or arm, I mean, where it lights up, tells them if it was if it crossed the line or not. So that way they can be like, yep, that's a goal. My, mm-hmm. my wrist lit up. Yeah. If it didn't light up, it's not a goal. Uh, so it's, it's pretty simple. It, it would mean a couple of things, though. One, it, it, Jesse would be getting that river a lot more and be expected to get those balls out because uh, those balls are going to be more expensive now. <laughs> they have sensors in them. Can't lose those to the river. Uh, less mon goals, uh, for sure. Uh, and then, two, um, I do think 
well, going on the other part of that with the VAR, I, I do think expecting these refs to be able to implement VAR correctly is a big ask. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, these are not top tier refs. Right. I still think it takes too long in a premier league game when I'm watching that, when they, mm-hmm. they go to VAR and I'm like, this should be simple. It should be mm-hmm. like, you look at it, you'd be like, yeah, you screwed that up yep. and then go on. Yeah. Or you didn't screw that up. Instead, they like him and hall about it. Yeah. It takes like five minutes for something to get decided. And it can be as simple as an offside uh, call. And they're like, why are they taking so long? This should be black or white. Just <laughs> say yes or no and, and move on. So, no, it is going to be that bad, though, if this disallowed goal is what keeps Chico out of the golden boot. Yeah. Um, because right now, the golden boot race is heated between Dequa and tight. who's the other guy? Um, uh, Trejo. Trejo, yeah. Yeah, Danny both Trejo. tied at 17 goals. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. What's, what's their schedule look like? Oh, I... I... <laughs> I didn't even look. It doesn't matter. But I, yeah. it's, I'm just curious, like, the opportunities for goals here. Uh, but, yeah. I mean, so uh, what I found interesting, I didn't I didn't put this in uh, the agenda tonight, but um, uh, went back and looked um, at the spreadsheet. Thanks, Jews, Mariana, and whoever else is contributing to that these days. Um, but uh, Deke was only scored in 10 games. Um, this season um five of them have been multi-goal games um which is i i just think is kind of interesting that he's scoring uh sometimes a few goals a game and then other times um granted he was injured for a little while um uh but then the other times he's he's knocking one in here knocking one in there um but i think that speaks to this team as a whole and the success that the team has that even when he's not hitting uh the goals um we're still still doing well and he's hitting a lot of goals and he's putting himself in that I mean, not putting himself in that he's in that golden boot race um and has every chance to to win that i think something that i found real interesting was not only where he is uh on the season uh, compared to other players but where he is in hound's history where's um, he at in hound's history so in hound's history uh he has 18 goals on the season, 17 in the league. There are only two players that have ever scored more, which is really surprising to me that there's only two players. Um, so 2003, uh, uh, Thiago Martins uh, had 23 goals for the team. 22 of them were in the league. And then in 2005, Robbie Vincent. Uh, 15, put, 2015. Yeah. 2015. Yeah. 2015. Not 2015. I'm not that old. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh had 18 in the league and he added three more in other competitions um for a total of 21 um and so i think the the question you guys had i think you were on that night um was will dequa hit 20 this season and i don't know if you guys uh were talking about it in terms of total or league play only i don't know if the conversation ever got that specific um uh and I think that that definitively possible with three games left um, in either of those categories. Um, I think the question becomes uh, how many does he hit overall this year, um, including the playoffs? Mm. And if the Hounds go deep into the playoffs, he's got to be scoring goals and that adds to his tally, right? Um, so I'm hoping that we're looking back at um, uh what is that the middle of November and uh, looking at an Albert Dequa that has set the records for the Hounds. I think it's possible. I think it's possible, but I also think we could still be doing fantastic and that not happen, which is, I love thinking that like mm-hmm. it used to be like, you know, we would think, Oh man, if Dequa doesn't score more goals, we're not going to do well. But it, that's not the case this year. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that we have someone in the Golden Boot run is amazing to me because I I don't feel like this team is reliant on one player mm-hmm. to score goals. Uh, so that's just like a you know added perk to the season is the fact that he has scored this many goals. And I, I do think there's opportunities still left in the season that you know 
that game against Detroit could be could be an opportunity there, uh, depending on if Troy has been you know eliminated from the playoffs already. Mm-hmm. That could be kind of a a downer note for them, or maybe they're going to be fighting for their lives. So it's going to be mm-hmm. a game where they feel the need to attack, 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 and we're able to get you know the ball rolling on our side yeah. uh, because of that defense would be pretty uh, weak. So there's there's opportunities. Uh, I am excited about that, but. Yeah, this is yeah. gonna be hard. I your your whole thing about him only scoring in certain amount of games, uh in like what was it ten games? Uh really does make me worried though that he's not gonna get the golden boot. The fact that he's in that race at all is amazing to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you bring up that that Detroit game, last game of the season. And I and I think that's a really interesting one. Um uh like we said, I mean two games in between now and then Tulsa and Tampa Bay. Um, And the results in those games, I think make that Detroit game a really big wild card. Um, I have no doubt that Bob Lilly will go out and go to win that game, no matter what. Um, But does he go out and go to win that game, trying to give some key players like Albert Dequa a little bit more rest in that game if the Hounds have already clinched first in the East. It's very possible. It's it's also very possible that he doesn't see giving Dequa a rest as a needed thing because mm-hmm. he has other scoring opportunities on mm-hmm. the bench and and are just in, on the team. Period. So mm-hmm. I don't I don't think we don't have a congested schedule at all now it's all saturday Mm -hmm. games from here on out um and uh, do we know what the first is it uh one weekend like is it one week for the first playoff game i mean i'm assuming so that's what it's always been right (laughs) yeah i i just was making sure i did not pay attention to the dates i know that season stick holders already got our notice about the first game but i I totally need to look at that yeah blanked i didn't yeah either did i uh but uh, regardless my point is that I don't think he needs to let players rest. And mm-hmm. I don't think that would ever cross his mind unless he had a congested schedule. So with that in mind, I also want to remind people that Bob also doesn't really give a damn about these records because we okay. all remember golden glove. Uh, was it Kyle Morton? Kyle Morton, I think. Yeah. Yeah. He needed one more game to get golden glove. If he would have started the, that game, he would have, clenched it and but i was like nah (laughs) i'm starting a different keeper so like obviously he doesn't care about that like he's gonna do what's best for the team not what's best for the single player when it comes to winning and losing yeah understandable just you know keep that in mind uh i don't think his golden boot race is on bob's mind at all Mm -hmm. yeah no and i I think that's right and i think that um that there's a few other things that we could look at. And I don't think that these other players are necessarily going to end up at the top of those categories. Um, but it has, it made me think about that. I, uh, I mean, we look at uh, Kenny Forbes with his two assists on Saturday uh, jumps back up into second place in the league assist chart with nine um, and uh uh, not in this game, but uh, weight is sitting at nine clean sheets, um, which is uh, third in the league. Um, and I don't, I don't think that those are things, especially weights. I think that, um, I mean, he'd have to get clean sheets in all three games to even tie. Uh, I don't know how you say the Blue City's keeper's name, Simley or something like that, um, who's already at twelve. Um, but I think the big difference there is. He seemingly was also not going and winning games in international competitions for his country. So boom, mic drop. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> true, true story. Yeah, he's um, not uh, playing for his home country. Yeah, I, I I think the thing that though is mind boggling to me in terms of looking over uh, some of the performance uh, on the individual side of things is uh, Jamali Waite making 35 saves this year. That's only 35 saves Um, of uh, players that are listed on the USL site. I think it was like 36 or 38 uh, keepers were listed. And he was like 24th um, from like the most saves to down to the lowest. Right. So he's like, yeah, he's like, because he's not having to 
make saves. When he does make saves, I think he's making great saves. Um, but I think that just speaks to the rest of the team and the quality of uh, what's happening um, for the Hounds in defense that he's not having to work as hard as some of these other keepers for those clean sheets and for those stats because he's got a great defense and a great midfield ahead of him closing things down. That's every Bob team. Yeah, I, I feel like that's been the song dance for you know, ever since Bob came to Pittsburgh is all of our keepers have great stats because they're not as relied upon Mm -hmm. to make these giant saves uh, constantly. Uh, They're the whole team plays defense. It's so the keeper's job is a little bit more, I want to say easy because there is something to be said about when you don't have to be on guard constantly, Mm -hmm. when you are needed, it's easy for a keeper to be, you know, kind of, left in the lurch because they're, they, they've been relaxed the whole game. They haven't mm-hmm. had to do much. So like you have to really have concentration and discipline to stay in that game and to realize that, you know, there might be a moment where you are relied upon to make mm-hmm. that big save. So that is hard in its own self, but at the same time, you're not constantly making saves like you are <laughs> on some of these other teams. Like you're, you're just not as relied upon for the defense. But, and I don't think you're saying this, but that's also not to say that these aren't really good keepers that he's finding. When exactly. you look at yeah. the guys that have proceeded weight in goal during the Bob Lilly era, you're looking at Kyle Morton, you're looking at, uh, um, um, yeah, I, uh, Vidiello. Danny. Vidiello, yeah. yeah. All I could think of was Danny. <laughs> um, <laughs> right? I mean, I mean, you're looking at guys that have gone on and had great success elsewhere as well. Mm-hmm. So, um all right, so uh, we got Tulsa coming to town. Um, I tried to find all-time uh, records. I couldn't find it. I didn't. I I was putting stuff together during a break at work, and then I got distracted and never got back to it. So I never, I never got to look at that. Um, but zero-zero draw um, earlier in the season in Tulsa on that absolutely horrible baseball field with the brown turf. Um, Josh. You got a prediction for this game? I mean, first off, Tulsa is fighting for playoffs. Uh, keep that in mind. They're in ninth place right now. So they they are trying to get up there. Um, Detroit is at 37 points. They're at 36 points. So, you know, Detroit is above the line. They're below the line. Uh, so th- this game matters to t- Tulsa. Like, obviously, we're getting near the end of the season. All games are very much important to all these team uh, teams. But with that said, Tulsa is also not a great team. There's a reason why they're below the playoff line. When the playoff line is at, you know, eight teams out of twelve, that's uh, that's not great, mm-hmm. <laughs> not great. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I fully expect the Hounds to be able to uh, handle this game uh, and get three points out of this. But I guess the question is more so for me, at least, is it a barn burner or is it just a stout Lily? You know, no nonsense, two zero two one victory, and, and you you call it a game. Um, I think that's more likely to be what it is. Uh, so I'm going to say two one again. All right, probably not two headers uh, on corner kicks, but two one. So I think that Tulsa comes out looking for the win, and um, I think because of that, they do score. Um, I think they're going to put a lot of pressure on, but I think they leave themselves really exposed. Um, so I'm I'm putting this at a uh, a very comfortable three uh, one win for the Hounds. Oh, I th- going one up on me. Okay, yeah, yeah. I I I, I mean that would not surprise me. I wouldn't be surprised by three zero. Like I, I don't think we should expect Tulsa to be able to break down our defense. Uh, but I'm just you know. That's as far down as I'm willing to uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Um, all right. So I, I saw, um, moving on, I saw some interesting news um, uh, today. Uh, looks like the Chattanooga Red Wolves are positioning themselves to join the USL championship in 2025, which I think that's kind of cool. Um, 
maybe we could see a game if we could uh, convince Kevin to make the drive there and we we all go down. Um, but he's not here to defend himself, so I'm not going <laughs> to put him put him too much on the spot. Um, but I just think that's cool. More teams coming in. Um, hopefully that happens and, and we get another team uh, with a cool name uh, in the East. I'm not crazy, right? Red Wolves were in our league one time, weren't they? I have no idea. Or was so... it just the Wolves? Oh, man. I know the Wolves were in our, our league one time. Um, I just can't remember what they actually called themselves, if it was Red. I don't know. It, it was a while ago. I yeah. think we're, in we're Chattanooga? talking like... Was it Chattanooga? No, no, no. It was like... Oh, I think it was Phoenix. Was it like the Phoenix Wolves or... Oh, maybe. oh, this is like probably 2015 okay. or something like that. 2013, somewhere back then. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it would be cool. I it sounds bad to say this, but I don't really think we need more teams in the championship right now. I think okay. we need more teams in League One. Um, I want League One to be more stable. I want League One to be, you know, building quality and stability and be able to support uh this whole idea of possibility down the road pro rail between us and them mm -hmm. uh and to do that i feel like teams can't just be abandoning that league left and right uh i, I hate seeing leagues going or teams going to mls pro next um which is also something that has been happening to this mm -hmm. the league one so like teams abandoning league one isn't something i'm really a fan of right now i i would love for teams to start just working on being the best team possible in mm -hmm. that league and then maybe then we can have some competition between the two leagues or uh i think the original plan not original but one of the more recent plans was to have a a league form between us mm -hmm. where it's kind of like a usl championship you know top and bottom essentially yeah um or however they you know whatever they want to call the the different like a league and b league or whatever uh and then have that be where pro rail happens mm -hmm. but either way cool i don't know like yeah. it's, I mean, I think it's also a ways away so we'll see yeah. a lot can change every single year in this league that's and true. especially in league one yeah that that uh point about that league slotting in in between i wonder if that's this is a positioning an expectation of that that maybe some of the teams are starting to get more info on the plan than is being leaked or we're hearing about yeah um i don't have to play hartford and see what happens if they can beat hartford then no uh, they're fine <laughs> i put the bar pretty low okay i, I mean <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it's that bad okay i hadn't looked at how bad hartford was 16 points 16 points in 29 games yeah we have 60 they have 16 <laughs> i knew they were bad but i didn't realize they were that bad i don't know the last time they won <laughs> uh josh i'm not going to be around all night for you to figure that out oh uh, wait wait it was oh <laughs> nope nope never mind i was wait, i was looking at the wrong team there uh so oh august 5th they beat new mexico Oh, that doesn't make me feel great about our 2-1 victory over New Mexico, but <laughs> Hartford beat New Mexico August 5th. That was our last win. Yeah. Um, hey, Josh, I hey, found out today, Steve. you probably knew this, um, but I found out that it was National Comic Book Day. Yes. That's cool. That's cool. Um, so if you guys haven't seen uh, the Hounds on their their socials, uh, put out some pretty cool uh, comic book covers. Um uh but yeah they're they're really cool uh what, what, what's your take on them josh uh both looked awesome i i thought mertz's image was really cool and connor forbes uh his image was fantastic mm -hmm. the, the the whole comic book layout for his was fantastic i, I i'm not i'm not sold on mertzinator uh it was a <laughs> terminator cover and mertz has like the red eye like a terminator and uh i just looked at that and i'm like mertzinator uh let's let's workshop that some more guys like I'm, that's not <laughs> that's not working for me uh could have seen a western theme maybe uh the hometown kid kind of like billy the mm -hmm. kid type style mm -hmm. that would have worked for me i mean knowing robbie i could see him saying absolutely not 
to something like that. Uh, just because I know that like he does, he wants to be seen as uh, not a kid. And I get that, right? Like, I, mean, uh, I get that. But every time he gets fouled, I love yelling. He's just a small boy. <laughs> 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 How could you? <laughs> Is that a short joke, Josh? Neither of us are tall. I, I know. I'm not tall either. So, uh, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah. So, Babyface Killer was also not a, 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 a name that he liked, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That that's what the one was back in the day. Yeah, that was. Uh, I think actually yeah. it was less so that Robbie had a problem with it. I think it was more so that uh, Grandma Mertz uh, well, did not like the name. So. I mean, and <laughs> I think we'll listen to Grandma Mertz. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah so before we wrap up um uh i guess you'll be uh out on the field after the game or is it oh for the the last home game of the season yeah play yeah yeah we do have uh, Army. voting just wrapped so unfortunately you cannot go place your vote but uh yeah we'll have player of the year award to give out uh at the end of the game um excited for that and then in other steel army news huge news for the first time in years and years and years, we are actually having a bus go down to an away game. Uh, so the Steel Army will have a bus. We're sharing the bus with the Hounds. Uh, we kind of both went in on on renting a bus. So we only have 25 seats, which isn't a lot, but at the same time, you know, kind of dip our toes into this since mm -hmm. we haven't done a bus in so long. But that does mean that those seats are up for grabs. We have it on our website right now. $90 gets you there and back on the same day. Keep in mind, this is an early game. It's a 4 p.m. game. So you'll be getting back pretty early, all things considered. It's not like you're going to be coming back at like 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the morning, which is nice. Um, and yeah, so 25 spots, $90. That gets you the game ticket as well. So... Cool. Uh, I think game ticket alone is like 20 bucks. So really 70 bucks for the bus. Pretty good deal. Um, get those seats while you can. Uh, we need to fill that up because whatever we don't sell, we're on the hook for. So please buy tickets. <laughs> Help us pay for this bus and uh, join the party. It should be a, a good time. I'm really looking forward to the trip. Nothing like a Steel Army bus ride. So come cool. check it out. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I mean, so lots to look forward to over the next few weeks. Um, Josh, any closing thoughts? This is fun. This season, like it, oh, it's, it's been crazy. It, this has been fantastic, and I'm I'm glad that it's still going, uh, and that uh, we have a home, at least a home playoff game to look forward to. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 yeah, I mean, this season there have been so many times where I'm like, man this is a good team. And then yeah. there's a, there's a part of me that wants to be like, ah, when's it going to all fall apart? <laughs> and it That's hasn't. The, and then I'm the like, no, this fan is a good <laughs> team. Right. And I'm just like, this is fun. Like, I, I don't know that I've had this much optimism uh, for this long uh, since I was a new Hounds fan. <laughs> Before right? you were beaten and broken right. by right. <laughs> repeated right. disappointments. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I, I feel you there. I will say I, I think I have had this much optimism in the past, but they were always unfounded. Uh, <laughs> it was always unfounded. Uh, Spoken like a true Everton fan. <laughs> yeah, well, no, no, that's that's not true at all. If I was a true Everton fan, I would never have optimism. <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it, it's been a great season. It's still a great season. And, you know, make sure you're still able or you're a part of it. Come out, check out the games and mm -hmm. yeah, come hang out with the Army. Yeah. I mean, hey, we are a few wins away, hopefully, from uh, seeing a lot of playoff games at home. Um, yeah. It's been it's been a great season so far. Can't wait to see uh, the drama that will inevitably unfold. Uh and I'm hoping that we're all really, really happy at the end of it. Excellent. Yeah. All right, Josh. Hey, you have a great night. Uh, thanks, everybody, for bearing with us in our te technical difficulties and uh, not having all of our uh, live stream, cool graphics, sound effects, and whatnot. Um, but yeah, um, you know who we are. We're Mongols. Um, you know where to find us, uh, bgn.fm. And you can find us on Mongols on all the social medias, um, the good ones, the bad ones, <laughs> and all the ones that nobody cares about. <laughs> um, but yeah. 
come seek us out um and uh we'll see you very very soon later <laughs>